you want to say maybe that if if uh, there is if a metaverse show is more complex to do than the yeah. real fashion show yeah uh, in same in certain ways yes and certain ways uh, not uh, not means um, in the real life uh, in the real uh, physical life you have to um, to pay much money to obtain certain things for example uh, all the lights photographers uh, pay the models and things like this i mean it is it can be less expensive that is the great thing welcome to the business ownership podcast brought to you by awareness strategies helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Maya. Maya, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you very much, Michelle, for inviting me. It means that somebody is interested in my opinion. It means one has uh, some opinion, and uh, generally it's a great thing to have an opinion because there are some people, they only have the opinion what the other people are telling them, only this opinion. So I hope I have my own opinion. So thank you for inviting me, Michelle. Awesome. So give us the 5,000 foot view of who you are and what you love to do. I am a 3D uh, couturier. I am. A, I call myself a metaverse couturier. It means I am a 3D fashion and uh, the 3D video making. And uh, yes, everybody knows. Meanwhile, everybody speaks about the 3D metaverse and all these things which are connected with this new technology. It seems to be um, at the right place and the right time because it is now very, um, uh, very important. Uh, many, many technological processes are now connected with the digital world, with the digital currency, and all those things with NFTs and whatever is connected with it. And that's why um, I am exactly there and I'm doing my 3D animation and 3D fashion. That's what I'm doing. Nice. Well, and the reason that I asked you on the, on, on to the show is because I saw your profile on LinkedIn and I was like, wow, that is fantastic. That looks super fun. So we, I had to pull it apart and I had to figure out kind of how this is all playing into the modern world and business and all sorts of fun stuff. So we're going to take this conversation all sorts of places. But first, I want to back up the bus a bit and go, how did you get into 3D rendering? Like that seems like a very specific and fun (laughs) realm of business. Yes, it is um, generally uh, each story is excited, which is exciting, which is connected with the art because 3D fashion is also the art. And um, uh, the case with me was the following. I was always, uh, I wanted always uh, go to 3D in the world because this is the 3D is something where an artist can be everything. Um, you have full control on the picture, on the, on the uh, avatars and on whatever appears there. You are not as much, if you're doing everything yourself, you're not as much dependent on the other people. So it, um, I was con- always considered the real, uh, real art, but there was another thing. I'm very. I was always very crazy uh, for, uh, about fashion. I always wanted to be fashion designer, but I had a problem. Uh, like uh, Houston, we have a problem. This kind <laughs> of problem I had, and this is following. Generally, if you are designing clothes, um, you have uh, just uh, approx- I, I tell you approximately, uh, very uh, schematically. You have to go through three phases. The first one is you are drawing a design, just designing, you are painting a picture of what you are, uh, what you are going to do. You have surely seen the sketches, how the designers are drawing their works. The second is you are, uh, you have to make a pattern. Pattern making is like as a kind of um, little bit geometrical, primitive geometrical uh, work, but it is uh, for geometry, it's primitive, but itself, it is not primitive, it's a very complex thing. Some people not e- cannot even make re- uh, correct patterns because they are, um, uh, it is too much uh, for, for somebody. But pattern makes no problem. The problem is for me always to sew the things together. If you are going to make a prototype, you have to sew the pieces together. And this is the work of the seamstress. And this work, I did not like. 
I hate it actually to be a seamstress. I always wonder how the people are doing this. I admire those people who can do, who can just have the patience to take the so the things so patiently. It's so lovely and it's so warm, but I cannot do that. And then, in it was um, 2019, right? three years ago. What I see, I see that. Wow, there is a software, there is software who is, which is doing this job for me, which is doing this sewing job for me. And I said, by God, the time has come. Now the software is so developed that I can do this work. And voila, I have decided I go into the 3D fashion and I do the 3D fashion. And so I came, came in, this, uh, in this world, tons of things you have to learn. It's always very complex because everything you can uh, learn anew, you have to learn the 3D animation programs and not only one program. You have to learn many, many different programs and they are interconnected, complex in a complex way. Some things are working, some things you have to find a workaround. You have to learn a lot. And there is, thank God, a global education possibility. You don't need to be present in the famous university of the world today. You have you, it is not necessary to study in London, um, designer school or somewhere. There is a there are very very there is a very good information also on internet and of from the um, from the good teachers who are the real masters of their work. And uh, for, that's what I I was uh, learning all the time and still learning my uh, workmanship art. You cannot learn. You must be an artist yourself. But workmanship is to learn and that's what I'm doing constantly because development is very important. That is the story approximately short, <laughs> short or long. <laughs> well, and that's an awesome story. And you bring up a great point that in being able to understand just because you've created say an awesome 3D dress, how do you then get that into the metaverse? How do you then market it in that universe? How do you, like, are you marketing in that universe or are you marketing in our universe and selling it over there? <laughs> yes, this is a very good question. Uh, the question is why you are, uh, maybe uh, I am interpreting this uh, a little uh, a little bit other way. Why are you doing all this job? This is um, the question. Okay. Um, the last year, these last uh, years, last two years have been a, reserve, a very big change in the understanding of clothing for the world. Many, many people who, ha who have come originally from the gaming have um, begun to, to wear the, um, the 3D clothes, the clothes which do not exist in the real space, they do not exist materially, but they exist only as a 3D mesh. This is how we call it, the 3D in the 3D world. The question is, of course, and the people are paying sometimes very, very big money, a lot of money for this. The question is, why these people are doing to, why are these people are paying so much money for something which they cannot show, which cannot touch, it is not touchable. And the matter is, the answer to this is that there are many things in our life which are not touchable. For example, education, for example, know-how, and we pay for it. And so is also the 3D art. And to understand it better, and really to understand how why the people are doing this, is when, if, you, if one really wants to understand, one has to take his or her own avatar and try to go herself in metaverse, and that's what happened. I, it was the situation in which I had to go into the metaverse, and I was also thinking this thought: Why the people are buying such things? And then I go into the metaverse. I take my, I create my own avatar, which approximately looks like me, because the possibilities were very limited. And then I have to, I have not the choice. Um, I have the, uh, the choice from the things which are already there. I cannot put on the, uh, the clothes which I made on the avatar. And I see the clothes which I put on this avatar. This is not me. I don't identify myself with this person. It is not me. And I, was, I, did, I felt so uncomfortable and un, uh, uneasy in these clothes. Understood? That is very important. If you have an avatar, it must be dressed also properly. And this is why the people are buying this. 
And I'm selling this clothes. I'm selling this on the Drift Boutique in New York. There are very many people who are um, now uh, ask, uh, um, are offering me collaboration. Some of them have new conditions, which I think, okay, they are good, well, good and acceptable. Drift Boutique has very good uh, conditions for the artists. And some of them do not have um, so good conditions, which from my viewpoint, and that's why I'm, uh, I'm uh, thinking, um, uh, and there are also, at this moment, there are also some who are going to, uh, more people, more um, companies who want to collaborate with me and to extend my designs on their, on their, um, in their online shops, in uh, 3D shops. That's where, where uh, they are general result as NFTs. As NFTs, awesome. So in, in the NFTs, are they wearable in the metaverse? Yes, I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, they're wearable. They're there are two, there are, uh, th this is a very good question because very many people do not understand. In the beginning, I didn't understand it either. <laughs> you have possibilities to buy something as an NFT, just as a work of art. Yeah. But you have also the possibility to take this work of art as a clothing and put it on your avatar. For this, there are special companies which are specialized on it. They are, they are bridging, they are bridging those clothes from, uh, from this 3D, uh, this 3D mesh and make it adaptable for the metaverse. So your metaverse avatar can wear them. This is a process, this is a, a process which is connected with certain knowledge and they are doing, they're offering the services approximately $100 depends, maybe some more, some less, so depends on the situation. But this is what happening, exactly so it's working now. Very fun. So are these people that just socialize in the metaverse or are they companies that have games and it's for the game purpose of the game and getting an up level or who's buying yes. this? Yes, yes. yes the people yes. generally want. <laughs> The yes means that they agree with your last words. <laughs> <laughs> I say yes to your last words because exactly this, um, they have put it correctly. Um, uh, this is um, uh, when the people go into the game industry, they are socializing with each other. When you are participating in one game, just you are, like, you are building a kind of a team. And that is very important for the people when you are part of this community, which is maybe fighting against another community, to be present there with your avatar as, and to be present as, as well as possible. And which makes uh, up your visual appearance. Once it is your avatar, which does not look very much like you. And the other very important thing is the piece of clothing which you are wearing. This is your appearance. This is you. This is your person. How possible? Which other possibilities do you have to express yourself? The artificial intelligence is very, very um, developed now, but it does not yet allow us to transform on the avatar all our all our movements. Not only artificial intelligence, but also the software is not yet so much developed. So much developed that. And so much advanced that it allows real time transformation uh, of the of the movement on so many avatars in the uh, in the in the uh, in the at the same time. This is what I mean. I mean photorealistic transformation, the accurate transformation of our movement, facial mimic, and the other things. All the things which make up our personality, and the thing which remains to express your personality is your avatar and your clothes. And that's why it is very important. Right, well, and I can only just imagine the extent of the complications that arise because once upon a time, you know, you, people used to play games and their avatar was a little square box with two little square legs and they were red or they were green. <laughs> Today, right, it is photorealistic and to be able to transform that I mean, I would think that would take a whole lot of, um, you know, even in the movies, if they're taking a dress, right? The way a short dress moves compared to a pencil length dress versus a flowing dress, <laughs> like the complications are almost um, exacerbated by just adding on, you know, six inches of cloth. Mm. 
the question which uh, which are uh, putting to me <laughs> are the questions which I actually wanted to uh, ask the community of the professionals and uh, exactly the questions which are which I want to ask the professionals to to deal with this problem. <laughs> and I'm I am this is exactly what I'm discussing with those professionals who are bridging the clouds into the metaverse. I'm wondering from where you have got all this knowledge. Okay, you must need don't need to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is a very good question, and I uh, this is exactly this. Uh, in order to explain this, maybe I try to explain it uh, in short. There are two major possibilities to simulate, to show the clothing on the avatar. One is very accurate, like the cloth simulation programs. One of them is very, very famous. It's called Cloth3D. It simulates the clothes very, very high, ac very accurately. But such kind of a simulation is not possible in the metaverse because it involves very complex animations and very complex, uh, it needs very many polygons. Polygons are the tiny, tiny pieces of which avatars and the mesh is made like molecules, let us say approximately this. Yeah. Uh, our uh, body is made of molecules, the avatar's body is made of polygons. It is a very uh, rough uh, comparison, but I have to compare it in some way. The yeah. more polygons the avatar and the cloth has, the more have, the more um, uh, the power of the computer is needed and oft, very often they crash. That's why in the game industry, in all this metaverse, we still use another way of the cloth simulation, which is called skinning. That means every avatar, every moving object has a not moving object. Every human-like avatar has inside a skeleton. And this clothing is attached to the skeleton in a special way in which, which is called skinning. This is not very accurate. It's not yet very accurate because it cannot simulate many natural things like gravity. When our clothes fall, when the, uh, you see my cloth is falling with the gravity, this cannot be simulated on the uh, skin in the skinning process. But um, I want to tell something to this. They are improving it immensely and some simulations are possible. That is why the all the people who are creating such clouds must also consider this fact and try to create such clouds which are at, uh, sticking closer to our body, so we don't uh, don't need such um, such um, effects as gravity on them. When you are when you are wearing a cat suit, does it matter this? if it is falling or not falling up, if it is moving in the wind or not, because it is very close to your body, to your skin. And at the same time, uh, there are also another possibilities uh, of animated clothes on, on the body with the artificial intelligence, which tries to find the algorithms, algorithms in which are inside and tries to find uh, to attach the clothes visually on the 3D space to the position. This technology is not yet very good. I'm not yet satisfied, but sometimes it shows good results. I personally um, think it needs still development, but everything is developing. So it's approximately this process. Wow. This is all fascinating to me. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating to me. And so who would be your ideal client? Who typically comes to you and says, we want you to do this project? Uh, the people who want to uh, buy these things can be, can be very uh, different. Just the people who want appear very well in the metaverse. Very many people, meanwhile, have been uh, sending, uh, asking me, uh, let us say approximately six people last month have been who asked me if I want to dress their avatar. <laughs> the matter is that I take this job very accurately. My avatars, which I'm making, they are, uh, if I'm, I'm going to dress a very special avatar, 
I mean this situation when I'm dressing my own avatar, this avatar has uh, the dimensions of a human body. I mean, in the 3D animation world, we also have to using exactly the same human dimensions as in the real life if we want. For example, avatar may have the uh, here um, 90 centimeter, 60 centimeter, etc. Et you understand it. So, and I, I am making patterns, custom-made patterns, which are fitting this avatar in the 3D world. It means if this avatar was a real person in real life, these clots would fit them the same way I was going to make the clots with these dimensions, which is very possible. And that means on every person who wants to be dressed in a 3D world, especially in a custom-made clothes, I have to take the avatars and make, make the clothes for them. Mm. This will be a kind of individual clothing. And I'm, I'm trying to develop some, uh, some um, easy, let us say, some um, way to do it uh, more efficiently, this job, individual mm. job. But this way, the other way, when you are bridging the clots to the general metaverse avatars, this is a common. This is like you are go to the you are go to the uh, house uh, to the shop and buy clots for yourself, which is mass production, which is production for everybody. So these are the clots which you are, which which are can be sold um, on those platforms generally. But for individual clothing, like you making individual clothing for a superstar, you have to um, have the custom size of this avatar to pass to make the uh, adequate clothing, so it so it looks like uh, well on this person because the clothes, uh, the workmanship of the good workmanship of the cloth is, it must make a person look better, to make the body look as perfect as possible. And that means to hide some imperfections and to show all whatever one has, whatever is beautiful in a person. This to understand is art, but to do this correctly is workmanship and one has to do that. So I'm working on the process. I'm working now, which is very much work, to uh, make it possible to do such works individually for each person as efficient as possible. Nice. I love that. So I can I can well imagine that, you know, Beyonce or somebody would have a whole entire wardrobe of very unique clothes for her. Mm -hmm. And then I also go to, there's probably a lot of people that when they create their avatar, don't want it to look like them. <laughs> so they, they create different um, sizing <laughs> of what they absolutely. want to have in the, in absolutely. the metaverse. Absolutely correct. Each person <laughs> tries to be, um, tries, tries to improve their body as possible in the avatar and make as like a superstar as possible. Still, <laughs> there are different understandings of the human body beauty. There are some people who think that bigger breast is more beautiful men like this especially you know they're like bigger breast small waist as small as possible etc some like other body parts long legs things like this so that means the avatars no matter how they try to make them as ideal as possible still are different and this is exactly what what makes this all there is no standard you cannot put yourself on a standard body avatar even if you if we if we have models like you have Naomi Campbell or you have uh, Linda Evangelista or some, some other um, uh, models uh, they still have different body body sizes so the right. couturiers have to make uh, for each star for each person make the perfect body and uh, regarding the superstars which are not models those people you must know they don't have perfect bodies they have more or less uh, typical bodies as every person has and why the, the reason why they look so good on the, on TV and when you look when you see them in a gala concert that they, they look so wonderful. You know why? Because they have a very good couturier. 
Yeah. Somebody who has paid Patrick lots. I was uh, watching the old movie, um, Liz Taylor as Cleopatra, Liz Taylor and some other clothes. Audrey Hepburn, um, these movies, was, I was watching them and thinking how, how wonderfully they have made their bodies look so perfect. And the, all this was, all this was because uh, the, uh, the couturiers, they had great couturiers who made such, uh, such clothing. Do not think that everybody, you go to the shop and you can buy such clothing what the stars are wearing. No, because they're <laughs> individual clothing. And right. the same is also for Avatar. Nice, yes, I love it. it. So, so we're doing something like a fashion show in the metaverse, yes, would that be kind of up your alley? And is that like exponentially more work than just doing, you know, the same amount of outfits for an individual? Is there like a production thing that goes on kind of like the London Fashion Week? Mm. This um, a lot of questions. I don't know if I have. If I know, I don't know if I understood this question uh, uh, properly. But yep. I try to understand it as uh, to answer it as I understood it. You want Perfect. to say maybe that if if uh, there is if a metaverse show is more complex to do than the yep. real fashion show. Yep. Uh, in same in certain ways yes and certain ways uh, not uh, not means um, in the real life uh, in the real uh, physical life you have to um, to pay much money to obtain certain things for example uh, all the lights photographers uh, pay the models and things like this I mean it is it can be less expensive that is the great thing the other positive thing is uh, you can, your fantasy has no limit there practically no limit your fantasy has no limit, but your software has the limit. On the other hand, it is much more difficult because the people who are doing this in the real life, in the re on, the, on the real stage, on the real um, catwalk, um, they are, uh, there are some things which are already there in this, in our lives, which we do not, are, we are not sometimes aware of the things which surround us and we take them for granted. For example, you are photoshooting somebody in a fabric. The fabric is there, the natural lights are there, the, the ceiling is there, the floor is there. In the 3D world, there is nothing. Everything is empty, empty space. And you have to do it to create everything yourself. And if a human mannequin, a few human person can walk there, 80 meters here, 80 meters the other direction, and smile sometimes, you have to gen uh, you have to transform this animation on the to the avatar and it will become complex if they start to walk to to talk. <laughs> it's going to talk. And so you have to do much, much more work. The very complex thing is to connect all those softwares together because one thing is done in one software, another thing is done in another, in another software. Those softwares do not communicate perfectly with each other. You have to find some ways to communicate them, to bridge those softwares. Very many different ones, sometimes two, three, four, five softwares. One makes animation, another makes avatar, another makes rendering and other makes clothes, all this software to put together. It is an immense work. And I can tell you one thing, you can only do this job when you really love it. If right? you don't love it, you would say, <laughs> no, thank you very much. I don't want without me and just go away. I have seen one doctor from the he was, um, he was giving an interview from one hospital and he said, the job was very hard. He's doing this only because he loves it very much. And the same can be said about a 3D designer and the 3D fashion maker, a video maker. That is very, very hard job. And if you have the people who assist you, this is also very difficult because you have to communicate those two things to your assist, assist the people who assist. Sometimes they don't understand the things the way you understand because the things are not physically there. They have to create something which is not there. And this is also very difficult to choose the right team to communicate with those people uh, because 
you have first to find them, the steam. And since because we have everything here new in our life, in this 3D animation, everything is new, there's not such an established thing uh, like a team does not exist. So you have to find everywhere in the world such people and uh, try to put them somehow together and, and art direct this all together. And uh, this is another thing which uh, many companies understood meanwhile, and they are asking for an art director because uh, if you do only cloud simulation, this is not enough for a 3D animation show fashion show you have you need many people who do different works and you need also an art director i may be one of the few people who is doing everything uh, oneself myself uh, most people are generally doing the work in teams uh, of course there are some who are doing everything myself, but I, when i see the other uh, some designers they are generally collaborating with each other somebody's doing that somebody doing this it's, i mean it's very nice um, I'm only collaborate with the musicians because I cannot do music myself and then I like music in my, my show. But uh, maybe in the future, in future, I shall need also the, as the people who collaborate with me and assist with me, uh, then we can do much, much better job when we are together. And it's very important. Nice. So many questions, because yes, I mean, when you build, make a dress, say it's a gown, you assume that there's going to be a floor there. <laughs> Whereas in the metaverse, there's no floor. So there's nothing to hold up the bottom if the fabric is longer than her legs. Like, and yes. then going downstairs <laughs> and where the knees go. And I mean, so many questions. <laughs> My brain this just... is called dynamics. This is called in our 3D world, it's called dynamics. You can simulate the dynamics in the 3D animation program. The animation program assumes when the avatar stands on the floor, then there is a floor downstairs and collides it uh, collides this this cloth. For example, this is mm -hmm. this is a clothing, yeah. and this is the this is the button, and yep. stops it here. <laughs> this is possible. This is the, what the software is doing. It is um, th such things are already already in software, but in metaverse. I don't know if they are uh, if they, if they have such colliders there, but I think they shall they shall do it. They are they are working very hard. Metaverse has got so much interest, and mm -hmm. there is a money flowing there, and uh, many people are very interested that the metaverse involves uh, um, re evolves. And that's why I think many good brains, very many intelligent people all over the world, somebody in Baku, somebody in Singapore, somebody in Canada, maybe, uh, <laughs> in, um, uh, or somebody in New York um, uh, are working on such problems, or India. No, I don't know where. Everybody I'm sure is. they all are. <laughs> Absolutely. So give us an example of one of your favorite clients. Oh, there's um, uh, I don't want to say that because um, you don't have to say their names. Just what was the project? Uh, um, or can you give us an idea of kind of what you did for them? OK, um, I did something. Uh, I did something for a famous designer, which who is a famous French designer, a very, very famous French designer. I would say the whole world knows him. <laughs> and I collaborated with him and I have done a uh, fashion animation video which it, uh, involves the clothing uh, of uh, he has made this time the, the, the exactly the piece of clothing was not mine this was the piece of clothing which uh, this designer has made but yep. everything else everything is around it the story the avatars uh, the uh, everything else with the exception of the cloth was was my work it was big success it was also printed in the magazines in the fashion magazines it was uh, printed in real i mean uh, the printed magazines in the printed media and it has been uh, shown um, everywhere in this uh, in this campaign um that's um, uh, that i think this was also the time when i understood okay the people are uh, people like my work and they think it's uh, it's um, good uh, because it has very very good um, uh, response and i thought oh well, 
it means uh, if I'm if I can reproduce the clothes so well on the avatars without having their patterns, they have they haven't given me the pattern. I have made the pattern myself. Just looking at the picture, at the, I I I uh, reproduce this pattern, which is not generally very easy. And I thought if I can do that, after all, I can also realize my own designs, which I wanted all the time. And uh, I think this was a very important. Uh, a uh, very important moment uh, of uh, realizing many things. That's why I like to speak about it very much. This was the point when I thought here at this place, I am going to be more than reproducer of the other people's designs. I will be reproducing my own designs. Nice, That's I love I it. Like so do you design. have a store in the metaverse? Excuse me. Do you no, have a store in the own, metaverse? No, not yet. I don't have my own store in metaverse where I'm selling the only my clothes. Like for example, your the famous 3D 3D designer house. Yes, everywhere. I mean, not 3D, famous real life designer, <laughs> real world designer house is selling their clothes in New York, for example, in Paris, uh, from Paris, in Paris and all over the world, and. If you go to the store, you can find, you can buy only the clothes from this designer, nothing else. Everything is from this designer. This concept is a great concept. I mean, if you if I have such a store where the people can buy the clothes of Maya S and can be dressed in Maya S, I don't have it yet. But of course, it is my um, it is my wish and it is my also my objective to create. Uh, such a store and the thing is the matter is that uh, at this um, one has to be very good to to be able to establish oneself as a designer and i'm working very 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 hard in this direction to be as good as possible so the uh, so i feel myself good enough to say now because i have very very high standards in my my brain um, and I'm not, never satisfied with my work. So um, sometimes very in very seldom, seldom situations, more or less. So I say, okay, if I'm 80% satisfied, then I would say I could open my store now. And uh, of course, it is my um, it is my um, objective. Uh, every designer wants to be as far. And um, yes, I hope I, I shall do it. I love it. I love it. I can totally see you doing that. So I know that our listeners are going to want more from you, whether they are designers wanting to go on metaverse, whether they want NFTs, whether they want just funky clothes for their own avatars. How do how does somebody start their journey with you? Oh, I didn't understand actually. I will listen how, to you. How do people do not understand? <laughs> That's I okay. didn't understand. What do you mean by starting a journey? Which 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 kind of journey do you mean? If they want if they want to work with you. How would they get a hold of you? How would they start to find out what you do? Do you have a website? Do you have? Ah, I know okay. you have LinkedIn. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm, I'm also in LinkedIn. This is the wonderful possibility to have the business partners. This is the most people are connecting me via LinkedIn. They are really indeed. There are very very people who are asking for collaboration. Um, the matter is, uh, some people. The, the matter is with some people. I'm already. The negotiating this collaboration and um, there are some people who think okay uh, some people ask me sometimes the questions are, are, are asking me for some special kind of collaboration which i do not accept that i don't think it is acceptable for me um, there are uh, and the way uh, you mean how do people come just coming back to your question mm -hmm. the best way is of uh, via linkedin and some are contacting me, contacting me via Instagram, Instagram and LinkedIn, because I don't have yet even my own website. I don't have time to do that. <laughs> I right? have, yes, you cannot, you cannot believe. I did not, I, I was not able to find time to make my own website because also here I want to make my website 
uh, according to my desires, not just if I wanted to make just, just a website, it would not have been no problem. But I want to make a complex website. I mean, not complex, but it's a simple black, uh, website, which is very complex to do. <laughs> and uh, so the people immediately understand what I'm doing. And it's not so easy. It's not so easy to go to make, uh, make website. There are professional people who, are, uh, who can do this job for me. But also these professional companies might understand what I want. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I don't communicate this to them, and for this communication, I don't have yet the time. But <laughs> also, this is the place. This is the. This is the possible. This is where I also have to work. There are many, many things for me to improve, and um, this is uh, very good. To when somebody asks me this question, um, I am sensibilized of the situation. I can realize it much better. And uh, sometimes, someone from outside, like you, asking me this question. Um, it gives me the possibility to think twice over this and say, wow, this, she's asking me about the website. Why well, don't have a website yet? And this is where I have to work. Thank you. That is very good. It's, Indeed, all, it's, it's really, all good. <laughs> because so I mean, good. It, of course, it's nothing good. wrong with being world famous and not having a website yet. <laughs> <laughs> no it's not wrong i don't mean it's wrong but um everybody expects uh, a website people are also often asking me what is your website and uh, to find the excuse sometimes i just say that i have it yet i'm uh, um have it yet this is the best way to answer it because as other another plausible answer i do not have but the, the answer is the truth i don't have time i don't have time for this uh, oh, no. the problem is not it is not a problem i'm I'm having tons of ideas. And uh, when one uh, project is finished, when I have done something, immediately appears the other idea that I don't know what to do. Uh, sometimes I have a feeling that my, my ideas are coming to me and they are, um, uh, I don't know how to express this. And uh, they, I'm, I'm obsessed maybe somehow and um, obsessed by, by design. And this is, um, this is good on one on one side, but on the other side, it's maybe not so good. So one has to find time for other things too. I'm thinking about my designs uh, from uh, when I get up until ten o'clock in the evening, until eleven o'clock in the evening. That's so awesome. I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So, is anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? or that you want to let our listeners know? What, I, what, what the language? I, I, did, <laughs> I was thinking, I was, I was thinking my water. I and, know, and you know, you're fully invested. <laughs> so it was awesome. Yeah. Oh, is there anything that I should have asked you, but didn't, or that you want to let our listeners know? Hmm. This question is also is a complex at the same time, so simple, simple complexity. Simple on my question. side, complex on your side. <laughs> no, simple and simple and complex simple, simplicity on a simple complex. I don't know. No, actually, you the questions which you have asked me have been really uh, complex, really serious, and the questions have been from somebody who has who understands something of the matter. I want to ask the question: How do you know? that you have to ask the question about the clothes, which are, uh, who has explained to you this, this problematic of the 3D animation? From <laughs> where do you have got all this knowledge? This is what interests me. Maybe you say something about it, or you say, no, I don't want to not to tell you. How oh, do you no, know? absolutely. I'm, I'm just fascinated with life. <laughs> First off, so let's start with that. Everybody is fascinated with life. This is this is oh, nothing. Uh, this is nothing special about you. Everybody loves life. <laughs> oh, but there's there's something fascinating about what you're doing to me because you're taking something that, I mean, CGA in, in a movie is one thing. Being able to take an animation and do essentially two D renderings, right? Um, yes. and then they, and then they start to morph it and becomes more and more difficult. But what I see you doing to me is even more difficult because at least they start with a, they start with a plot. They start with some storyboards. They start with some ideas of what do we want to build out here? And, mm -hmm. and oftentimes we'll have a human rendering <laughs> that they can work mm -hmm. with. I understand what you're saying. At this time, and yes. I, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. So it's, um, it's not necessarily that I've done any 
um, work in this arena at all. I have not. Uh, it's just when I see something, I'm in awe with, you know, even watching somebody draw a cartoon. I'm fascinated with how do they get it to look the same every time or whatever the thing is. I'm just naturally curious and fascinated. Yes, we are generally curious and fascinated. We all are fascinated <laughs> when we do not uh, do it generally something. For example, if we saw, saw a good doctor doing a great job, sometimes we see this operating, oh, see how he's doing this, how they are doing such a horrible, complex job. For them, it is nothing special because they are specialists. But for mm -hmm. us, it is something else, or an astronaut who's flying there, my God, it is, I imagine myself sitting in this rocket, sitting in this spaceship, pressed to the pressed to the gravity and just shooting up the upwards. And the people are doing, and this it is dangerous. Everything may happen. They are they are going upstairs and not whatever is happening to them is going to happen to them. And the people are venturing such things today. They're venturing, they have been venturing in the past. And these things fascinate me, this fascinate many people because we cannot do that. This is exactly also what is the good uh, about the art because the art, not everybody can do the art. By the way, now the artificial intelligence is also doing the art, the machine is doing the art, but it is not the art which uh, real art it is not. It is, it is so, so la la art, it's not a super <laughs> art. It's like, if the machine can do it, it's not art. But the fact is, the fact is, that um, most people are not artists. Most people cannot create anything. Uh, I mean, uh, some people can create music, some people create something, but they, they cannot create. Most people are not creative. And that's why it is, uh, for them is fascinating uh, mm -hmm. because they, everything which we cannot do is had some mysterious aura about it. And uh, this is uh, what fascinates us, maybe this, but still the questions have nothing to do with the fascination. Somebody surely has explained to you many things which you are not saying to us, okay, this is, um, this is not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> you, I understand very well that you have some secrets as a, um, journalist is a, is a interviewer as a show person person from the show uh, and uh, it's okay with me I mean but the questions have been really you see uh, from somebody came from somebody who understands the matter well I'm glad you enjoyed the questions and that's all that matters because I thoroughly enjoyed having you on the show thank you so much for your time I know how valuable it is I appreciate it Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On the contrary, I thank you for having your time, for uh, all this interest that you showed to me, towards me. And man, I'm very thankful to you. It's, uh, I must thank you, not you must thank me. Thank you very <laughs> much, Michelle. Thank you, Maya. We will have all of your links in the show notes. And as you come up with new links and websites, feel free to share them with us. We'll make sure those are in the show notes too. Thank awesome. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedlek. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and join our Facebook group, Business Ownership Secrets to Scaling, because we love helping your business grow. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.